Deuteronomy chapter 8, continuing the laws and regulations when they get into the land. You realize that when you look at the Old Testament, the law, it is Israel's gift of God in the land to be a nation under God, a children of God. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do that ye may live. I can do all the commandments and preach on the street and not live. There's no promise in the church age today if I do something, I'm guaranteed life. There have been many Christians who have done what God has told them, and because they've done what God has told them, Fox's Book of Martyrs is filled with their lives ending and mighty. And go in and possess the land. That's not church. That Roman Catholic church system. You know how you know they're stealing from the Jews in the Old Testament? Because they want lands. They fought battles for land. They want Israel. They want Jerusalem. They want the conquered Roman Empire. It's all for taking up swords and fighting to gain land. I'm not interested in land. As in the church age, my desire is New Jerusalem. I cannot earn anything to get to New Jerusalem, but by the finished work of Jesus Christ, and I'm not taking up a sword, I'm taking going to people and preaching the gospel. Which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And now shall remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee, these 40 years in the wilderness. They've been worn around 40 years because of the sin of their fathers and grandfathers. To humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in their, thine heart. Whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And they're not going to. They haven't. They've been rebelling ever since Moses showed up to say, Hey, I am spoke to me. And we do the same thing. We disobey. We fight. We grumble. We complain. And he humbled thee. And suffered thee to hunger. Look at that. God caused them to hunger. God caused them to go without food. God wants them not to have food. So he can see. What are you going to do? Who are you going to rely on? Me or. And fed thee with manna. Which thou knowest not. Manna means what is it? No one knew what manna was. Neither did thy fathers know. All they know is it showed up in the morning. They had to gather it by a certain rate. And it, when sun came up it waxed. Nothing. During the, during the regular times you, you gathered so much for the Sabbath. The day before the Sabbath it was able to be gathered twice as much. And if you did uh, take up extra. It bred worms and it stank, but it did not bred worms and stank on the Sabbath day. That's some weird kind of bread. Now watch this. Which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know. And he that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread alone, but by Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Jesus Christ quoted this passage to Satan. When Satan said, make these stones bread. Uh, I'm trying to think right now. So let's go see what the Bible says. In Matthew 4 4, Matthew 4 4, All right. Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. That's what I was trying to think of. And as soon as he's, he's, he's done with the 40 days and 40 nights, he doesn't get food. What did it say over here? And suffer thee to hunger. And at the end of Jesus' hunger, Stu had not had a meal. 
Satan pops up and says, well, hey, verse 3, and when the tempter, which is Satan, came to him and said, if thou be the son of God, he is, command these stones to be made bread. Do something for yourself. But he, Jesus, answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. There it is. But he, uh, Deuteronomy says, man shall not live by bread only. In the New Testament, we find bread alone, alone and only are the same words. Let's go to Luke 4 4. And this temptation only occurs twice in the Bible Matthew 4. Luke 4, and it's funny how they're both in the same chapter. And in Matthew 4, I mean Luke 4, 4, same chapter, same verse. Jesus answered him saying, it is written. Deuteronomy 8, verse 3, that man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word of God. That's three times it's written. Three times. And when you see it written three times, it's important. Now, Matthew records Jesus Christ as king of the Jews, not church. Luke records Jesus Christ as the son of man. Both those Gospels have the genealogy. Mark and John don't. A genealogy of a man. The man Christ Jesus. And when we come back to Deuteronomy 8, it's important to see that God suffered thee to hunger. And yet when we go to the Gospels, we read that Jesus suffered of no food for 40 days and 40 nights. So... Now, Israel did not suffer 40 days without food. God took care of them right away. So you know what that match is? When Jesus quotes Satan to say, you guys went without food, but listen, I went 40 days and 40... I don't think a man can survive without food for 40 days and 40 nights. Well, I'm talking about the normal man. I know Moses did. Probably Elijah too. But a normal man. So when you read... And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. Jesus Christ went above that hunger by 40 days. And then Satan showed me he still didn't get nothing to eat. It was only after the temptations that the angels come and ministered him. And fed thee with the manna. Jesus said in John 6, that's him, the bread of God, that came from heaven. So this is very remarkable. That in Deuteronomy 8, 3, we are reading about Jesus Christ. Thy raiment wax not old upon thee. They didn't have to go buy clothes. They didn't have to fix them. They didn't have to mend them. The same clothes they came out in Egypt. They are still wearing today where they are now. That's, that's remarkable. 40 years the same clothes. Neither did thy foot swell. If you're going to walk that amount of time, your feet swell these 40 years. Any of them have diabetes and their feet didn't swell? And they hadn't had no foot conditions where their feet swell from it? No one's foot swole, swollen. Thou shalt also consider in thy heart. It's never done by the head. Psychiatry cannot help you. It's a heart condition. As a man chasing his son. That's not taught today in America. So the Lord thy God chases thee. And you find that in Hebrews 12 or 13, I think. 
Let's go over there. Hebrews 12 and 13. Let's see what the Bible says. It's very important. 12. I think. Hebrews 12. Six. And 6. Now this is important because America says you're not supposed to chastise your children. And this is how you ruin Christianity. You get somebody saved and God chastised. Oh, I'm, I'm quit. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. it. Today, if you love your children, you won't chase them. That's not love, according to Proverbs. And scourges every son whom he receives. So when you do wrong, God is going to correct you. If you endure chastening. That's what we're a subject right now in Deuteronomy. Hey, if you endure chastening. God deals with you as with sons. God, you love me. I deserve this. And you're doing it for my welfare. If he's got to grab you by the neck and he's got to throw you down and he's got to tie you down and get you. No. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth is not? You realize our chasing before God when we come to God and say, God, you know, we've done wrong. And what happens next? What's supposed to happen next? The chastening. But if ye be without chastisement, chastisement, whereof all our partakers, then are ye bastards. Oh, that's a big that's the only place bastard shows up in the Bible. Plural. And not sons. So that moment that bastards show up in the Bible is that moment is, you know what? If you don't belong to God, you're not a child of God. So let me tell you this. Anybody who ends up in hell is a bastard. I got to say that plural because I believe there's a bastard in the Bible, a uh, singular. Because you're not a child of God. If you're not a child of God, you go into hell. Because it says bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we had fathers of our flesh, that's your physical father, which corrected us. Now the Bible says in Matthew, by every idle word shall man give an account of God. Every father is going to give an account for how he chastised or chastised not chastised not his child boy there's so much coming to the great white throne judgment there's so much coming to the judgment seat of Christ that's not preached in the pulpits I have never heard yet out of the pulpit and said first time here that for the say as a father if you don't chastise your child or if you do chastise your son it will appear before the judgment yay or nay that's not preached and when you get these children that are shooting up other children in schoolyards, it's because they have not been chastised. And today, most of them don't even know who their fathers are. That's wicked. That's selfish on the part of the adults, which corrected us. Wait, furthermore, we had fathers of our own flesh, which corrected us. It's taken as common knowledge that fathers back then, at the writing of 64 AD, corrected their, their, their children. And we... Gave them reverence. So we didn't get chastised again. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father, capital F, of spirits, and live? When God does chastise us because of our sin, we ought to look to the Father and say, You love us. For they barely for a few days chastise us after their own pleasure. Sometimes the father will do it wrong because you know what? You embarrassed me in front of the people. You made me look bad. You ruined our family name. But he for our prophet God, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastising for the present seems to be joyous. Who enjoys chastising? Being the receiver thereof. No one. But grievous. But nevertheless, afterwards it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness 
unto them which are exercised thereby. So chastisement helps. Chastisement gets you in the will of God. It pleases God that we say, you know, Father, it hurts. I do not appreciate what chastisement does as far as the beating. But it's for my welfare. It's for me to improve. And he says in, in Deuteronomy 8, Thou shalt also consider thy heart that as a man chastises his son, Hebrews 12. So Hebrews 12 quoted from Deuteronomy 8. So the Lord thy God chasteneth thee, Hebrews 8. There it is. Chastisement is a Bible doctrine. Hebrews 12, 6. What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do to the child welfare organizations of America where they say, Florida says we can do it. But there are states that absolutely violate the Bible. This nation under God, God bless America, one nation under God. And God says you take that child and you chastise him. If you don't, you got the troubles you got today. And it's only going to get worse. Used to be able to have teachers chastise the children in the schoolroom. I guarantee they didn't pull the junk they do today. We read, we heard people tell us testimonies of their children being teachers, being beat up in the schools, having a fight in the schoolroom, and the teacher tries to break up the fight, and the teacher got in trouble. Well, listen, if you're not going to stand for the teacher, then don't expect the teacher to make a stand. Their preachers get up and say, well, we're going to have a revival in America. You're absolutely full of crap. There is no reverence to authority in this country, so there will be no reverence to God. Hebrews 11, uh, 12 said, if our father corrected us, we gave him reverence. There's no reverence of the fathers today. My dad is unsaved, and I still fear him. Verse number 6. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. If not, what happens? Chastisement. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. It's a good land. Now watch this. Seven lands here. First of all, it's a good land. America tries to steal that title. A land of brooks of water, of fountains, and depths that spring out of the valleys and hills. Nice, fresh water. A land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates. A land of fruits and vegetables and grains. Now notice it says a good land, a land of water, and a land of food. You need water first before you die without food. You can live longer without food than you can live without water. And those are waters first and then the food. That's interesting. Okay? So there's your vegetation. There's your crops. And oil and land of oil, olive, and honey. That oil there of the olive was used for anointing the priests, the kings. It was used for your, your skin. It was used for cooking. And honey is your natural sweetener. I would probably assume that honey is more healthier because it's in the Bible than sugar. And you can't find sugar in the Bible. But you can find it in the churches out of the pulpits. There are diabetic churches today. A land whether thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt lack you shall not lack anything in it. So it's a land that's completely provisional of substance. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. It's a land with natural ore resources. This is a good land. When thou hast eaten and art full, 
Then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land. Closed it up with the good land. Look, from good land to good land. Look at it's all in that land. Which he has given thee. And they're not even in land. And Moses says God's given it to you. You're not there yet. But it's yours. There's no excuse in the book of Joshua why they didn't get it all. Except they gave up. Now we're going to look at the word forget. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. So you, you see, you are capable as a child of God, Israel was, and as a Christian, you are capable of forgetting God. There it is. Why would that warning be there if it was not? Oh, I'm saved. I'm always going to remember God. Really? You haven't read Christian Facebook posts, haven't you? You haven't read their walls, have you? Not the, not the Lord thy God. Forget not the Lord thy God. And not keeping his commandments. Uh-oh. And his judgments. And his statutes. Which... I command thee this day. Read Jeremiah. Jeremiah, they forgot God. They went after every God, after every goddess, and the moon, the stars, and everything. In Jeremiah's time, you can almost say he got a half a convict. And the book of Jeremiah ends with lamentations that the city of Judah was taken by Babylon, destroyed. Why? They forgot God. Listen, there was a time in America that the Methodists and all that, they were great preaching hellfire in churches. The Methodist church early in America and all that, they were right with God. They forgot God. They went in with the world. Uh, William and Claire Booth, they had a right heart with God. They started off right with God. And the Salvation Army today, look where they are. They forgot God. At least when thou has eaten and art full, and has built goodly houses and dwelt. Now see, materialism. A materialism will make you forget God and thank your checkbook, your job, your occupation. As we seen the other day in a commercial. Oh, we got in this big accident and we just want to thank our car maker for our car. You mean you're not going to thank God? You're not going to give God the glory that you came walking out of an accident? You know, that money you soak into the car. Has built goodly houses and dwelt therein. When thy herds and thy flocks multiply. What makes flocks and herds multiply? God. And thy silver and thy gold is multiplied. Your bank account. And all that thou hast is multiplied by God. Then thy heart be lifted up, America, pride, and thou forget the Lord thy God. You see what pride does? Pride will make you forget God. Did you see that? There's another for you. You can forget God because of materialism. And you can forget God because you forgot his commandments, his testaments. His, he said, well, what about the Christian? You forget about reading your Bible. You forget about praying. You forget about serving God. You forget about hearing about the Bible being preached. And then the next step is when you start getting the materialism. Which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt. You forgot your Bethel. Now Bethel for Jacob was where he met God and God spoke to him and God gave him a promise and they got right with each other there. The Bethel for the children of Israel is Egypt, the Passover night where God met with them and God dwelt with them and they got their hearts right and they forgot. Lord God, please make me never forget in April 1987, my grandmother's coffee table never make me forget that the King James Bible being held by Joe Caswell. 
Never, Lord God, help me to forget not that day where I was a rotten sinner going to hell. Had I died before that Saturday afternoon, I would have been in hell. Lord God, please let me never forget that day. Never. Because the day I forget that day, the day I start moving away from God. May I never forget Calvary. May I never forget the, the tomb where the body was laid. And may I never forget the three days and three nights later that that tomb was emptied. And the angel said, he's not here. He is risen. May I never forget that. Because when I forget that, I'm going to start moving away from God. And Satan will be there with materialism. He'll show up and say, yeah, why don't you just turn these stones into bread? See that? Take this ore and make food. I'll give you all these worlds. When you start moving away from God and his Bible and his word and prayer and all that, and you start getting materialism given by Satan, Satan will come in and say, okay, why do you need God? Didn't the interest do it well? Didn't your boss give you all those raises? You forget that God has done it. The Bible, God, then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, from the house of his bondage. Keep going back to where you were, when you were lost. And that morning, that afternoon, and that night, when you got saved, remember that. Keep that. Write it down if you have to. And they're going to tell you, they say, diagnose that you're going to get to a point, you're going to start losing your memory, and you write down in your Bible, you write down big and clear that testimony you have. So if you do lose your memory, you can go back, with, hopefully with the facilities that God will keep, you can just read, you may not remember, but you can read what happened to that day you got saved. Who led you through that great and terrible wilderness. So see, the problems are still going to come when you're saved. Even for the children of Israel, it's a, it could have been a wonderful, great, fascinating highway to, to the land, but it wasn't. We're, in, we're fiery serpents. And at one point in Israel's time, they were being bitten by those serpents because of sin. And scorpions. And drought. Where there was no water. And we read about that. Who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint. Now, a flinty rock is the most driest rock ever, and you can take a flint rock and you can make sparks, and that's what's in your lighters. And out of that flinty rock that's so dry came water. That's impossible. That's a testimony. Come on, take your lighter and say, and next time you, you switch your lighter, you have water come out of it. You can't. But God did. When God chose a rock, he chose a rock that flints, that makes spark. And what's that spark? The Bible says when God made hell for Satan and his angels. Check that out. For what he made hell, he sparked that fire of hell. He sparked water for the children of Israel. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna. Look at that. That's twice in this chapter. Manna. Twice. Got to be important. Jesus, John chapter 6, said, He's the manna from heaven, which thy fathers knew not. Again, repeat it. That he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee, and do thee good. Uh-oh, at the latter end. That's a reference to when Jesus Christ comes. That's a reference to the end of the, the, end of the tribulation period. Somehow God's going to drive them to what we think is Silipetra, and God's going to feed them again. Because they're not going to be able to buy. They're not going to be able to get food. Because they will not receive that mark. And thou shalt say in thy heart. My power. And the might of my hand. Have I gotten me this rich, this wealth. That's, that's America. And yet that's, that's Judah. That's the time of Jeremiah. That's the time of the kings. Look how great we are. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. And it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant which he sware unto thy fathers as it is this day. 
and thou shalt be if thou do wait a minute, it shall be if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God. So see it's possible. And walk after other gods. And serve them. So when you forget God now, you forget God because you leave God by the word, by prayer. You forget God because of materialism. And then when, now when you forget God, you're going to go after all the gods and you're going to serve them and worship them. You say, well, I'm, I know somebody's out of church. It doesn't have to be church. They can serve their employer. They can serve their car. They can serve their bank account. They can serve the stock market. They can serve anything but God. Broken the first commandment. I testify against you this day that ye shall utterly perish. Without God, you don't have life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you don't believe in God, you do not trust in his ways, you will perish. As the nations which the Lord destroyed before your face, they're going to hell. So shall ye perish. That would be a terrible place for a Jew. Just go ask uh, Jonah and Peter. Two people that won't have anything to do with, Jew, with uh, the Gentiles. But what God just told the Jews there, listen, you don't like those Gentiles? That's fine. You worship those gods of the Gentiles? I'll spend time with Gentiles in the lake of fire that burns forever. You better have the God of the Jews, the Hebrew God, Jehovah, because he would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. So the statutes, the commands, the laws are set forth for Israel to be a nation under God and to keep them out of hell. To keep them right with God. To keep them in the favor of God. And if they stepped out of it, there would be chastisement. And they didn't obey that chastisement. They became bastards. And they went into hell. Bastards are in hell. It's the truth. And God so loved the world that you don't have to be a bastard. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you become a son of God. And you go to glory. You go to New Jerusalem. 